All right, so we got these three out of the way. How many more are there? Oh, hey, that's not too bad. Might as well get cracking on... All right, fine. We can shift gear this week. Hello everybody, I'm Garrilla64, and truth be told, I wasn't going to talk about any of these games because they don't really interest me very much, but apparently my inner completionist had a problem with that, so here we are. Whenever you come across a popular IP, it's very likely you'll also find some spin-off games hiding amongst its library of releases. Just like Mario, Sonic wasn't just a guy that ran around and saved the day, he was also a teacher. And a space pilot. And he could make popcorn. I don't know about you guys, but if I could do even one of those things, maybe I wouldn't feel like such a colossal failure. Spin-offs don't always have to involve the main character, of course, and sometimes thrusting another character into the spotlight is a good way to expand their appeal or justify the change in gameplay. Of all the games we'll be looking at today, two of them star characters that were long overdue for their own spotlight, and the rest feature Sonic doing other things because he just didn't feel like running around anymore, I guess. You know the joke already, I don't gotta say it. I decided to look at these starting with the ones that interested me the least, moving down the line to the ones that interested me the most. And let me tell you, my interest for some of these has actually increased since checking them out. That being said, let's start with the least interesting game on the list and one I am still not fond of. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. So I'm very clearly one of the only people in the entire world that just doesn't get Tetris or Puyo Puyo because when I tell people that, they yell at me. The internet is a great place, ain't it? I've just never been interested in sitting in place, staring at a screen, and watching as little colored pebbles descend from the sky with my only goal being to set up combos. The only time I've ever played Puyo willingly is during Sonic Mania playthroughs, and aside from Sky Chase, that's my least favorite part of the game. It really just bores me, I'm sorry, like, I, I don't really know what to say about it. I played Mean Bean Machine for about 5 minutes, and every single second felt like 15 years. I didn't even end up finishing the match I was playing against the AI, I just couldn't get through it. Now this is not me saying that this is a bad game, and this is not me acknowledging that I'm bad at the game. I mean, I'm probably not great at it, but I think I was doing okay. I just can't play these kind of games. If you like it, that's totally fine, and I actually enjoy seeing people playing these games as well. It's just my pesky 10 second attention span doesn't let me get into stuff like this. Other than that, people tend to rave about this game, and we're super psyched to see it referenced in Sonic Mania, so having it on the Game Gear is pretty cool. For those who enjoy it, I'm really glad you have this, and I'm sure you're wondering why I decided to even include this in the video. It's because I wanted to go through all of the spin-off games, and if I just left this one out, I feel like there'd be a little hole in the video. And people would no doubt be asking me about it anyway, so that's my thoughts on that one. Now, I know that was pretty quick, but if you didn't catch my drift, I don't have very much to say about this game, and actually... Dang, that was a pretty good segue, because guess what we're talking about next? That wasn't a lie, by the way. I was just writing the script, and if you catch my drift is just something I'd say, so it was one of those happy accidents that became a pun. Whether you believe that or not, we're going to talk about the Drift games now, and I have a lot to say because I didn't expect to like them as much as I did. When it comes to retro racing games, I genuinely tend to steer away from them in favor of games with a bit more to offer. I can only ever recall playing Super Mario Kart once when SNES Online hit the Switch, and aside from that, the only other retro racer I can remember playing is Pole Position, which, now that I look at it, is pretty much the exact same thing as Sonic Drift, except without any extra garnish on top. So yeah, Sonic Drift is a racing game, the series first in fact, and they chose to put it on the Game Gear for whatever reason. I mean, the Genesis was sitting right there, ready for some of that action, but alas, 8-bit hell was this game's destiny. Seeing as the Game Gear only had two buttons, the gameplay wasn't anything groundbreaking. Holding one button accelerates, and the other breaks. Apparently, there's also special abilities you can activate by pressing up on the D-pad, but I didn't learn this until I played the sequel. For my first attempt at the Chaos GP, I decided to use Dr. Eggman, since it's not every day that you're allowed to do that. I actually found it pretty hard to keep up with the other racers, and I managed to give the Doctor several concussions by slamming him into the obstacles on the side of the track, and uh, it kind of left me wondering what I was doing wrong. As a first-time player, was the learning curve just really steep? After failing miserably, I went back in, selected Sonic, and for the first time decided to press the other button on the Game Gear just to humor it. And that's when I discovered why the game was called Sonic Drift. Holding that button lets you drift. Alright, alright, in my defense, it looked like I was drifting already, just like I had to take a really wide turn before I got to the turn. But after I learned about the existence of this button, my gameplay went from this... ...to this. Yeah, it was kind of a pro-gamer moment learning to press a second button during gameplay. 
Marble Zone is still terrible to play though, no amount of drifting could help me there. After I managed to come in first place in this very familiar but also alternate timeline, I clicked onto the next GP and decided to stop when I saw the tracks were the same. But once again, that was a hot-headed, dumb, idiot brain moment because they're actually not the same. The tracks are different, just the themes for each stage are reused. Regardless of that though, I didn't notice at the time, so I moved on to the second game since I figured if I liked the first one so much, I'd probably like the second one even more. <laughs> Drift 2 plays identically to the first one, except now there's way more at stake because of the items that have been added to the game. I also found myself getting smacked around by other characters' special moves more this time around, especially Amy's, but I was never really sure what it was doing to me. I guess Knack just doesn't understand the concept of love. This game all around has a ton more content than the first game. Instead of just having four themes and different tracks for each, the different GPs actually have totally different locales for each race. And there are even new versions of racetracks here that don't have laps, it's just a get to the goal first type deal. Returning from the first game are Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Dr. Eggman, and joining them are Knuckles, Metal Sonic, and most importantly, Knack the Weasel, who I elected to play as for every race because he's purple and what more could you want in life? I then proceeded to lose almost every single race in the cup and decided that my time with the Drift series was coming to a close. So is it better than the first one? Yeah, probably. You gotta pay attention a lot more and adapt to the craziness that some of the racetracks bring to the table. But I think I kind of prefer the first one. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments. Now, back to having Sonic in the limelight, because he so desperately craves the attention, Sonic Spinball is Sega's take on Pinball. Yet another game that I don't enjoy playing, but this isn't just your average, everyday pinball. Man, if I was reviewing Sonic Pinball Party, I could have said it's advanced pinball, and that would have been hilarious. I'd at least seen gameplay of the Genesis version of Spinball, and I think I own it? But I've never delved into it much. The problem was, I had heard mixed things about it, and then there's the whole it's pinball thing, but there's nothing like an obligation to upload one video a week to get you playing games that you never would otherwise. You can take that as a good thing or a bad thing, it's really up to you. Sonic Spinball is what my brain kept calling an active pinball game, where you're not just slapping Sonic silly with the pinball paddles, you actually have to control him in the air to a slight degree so you can better aim him towards your objectives. You see, this isn't just one small pinball board where your goal is to gain points, it's a big connected world of areas you need to visit to grab all of the Chaos Emeralds found before finishing the stage. And when I say big, I mean not like, this isn't Skyrim or anything, this is just, it's like, it's larger than your average pinball table. It's like three pinball tables glued together or something. Sometimes you'll just stumble upon the jewels while bouncing around without a care, but other times you'll have to hit a switch to open a capsule or something to get at one of the other ones. When devs go out of their way to expand the core gameplay past just keep doing this until you lose, it really grabs my interest and makes me want to keep playing, and I think aside from Drift, I spent the most time on this game trying to complete the first board. Something I played in the past actually came back to haunt me while I was playing this, that being Mario Pinball Land, a game that tried something similar except removed the player control entirely in favor of pure pinball gameplay with tasks for the player to complete. I didn't get that far in that game either, but between the two, I feel like I played Sonic Spinball a bit longer. No amount of tasty jams could keep me invested this time. Sorry Mario, the hedgehog wins my praise just this once. Finally, a game that was totally unlike anything we've played so far. Tails gets his own game that doesn't involve making music or using the same subtitles a game that would remain in every Sonic fan's mind for all of eternity a few years later. Sorry Sonic, Tails had an adventure first, therefore you are unoriginal and a sham. Tails Sky Patrol sort of feels like a shoot 'em up game, but with less shooting and more collecting candy and questionable violence. The goal of this one is to track down a cast of wacky characters, including a stereotypical witch, that one character from Tiny Toons, a totally unremarkable bear, and Sonic the Hedgehog using the weird mushroom power-up from Mario Maker. Fun fact, this witch character and the rabbit were actually redesigned and used in the Sonic Archie comics at some point, the witch suddenly turning out to be Nagus' sister. If you ask me, that is an excellent way to expand the lore of both the game and the comic. Seriously, an excellent use of the source material, Archie writers. Gold stars all around. As Tails, you harness the power of infinite flight and using it, and the various poles, minecarts, and power-ups, you're supposed to make it to the goal of each stage while keeping your energy meter up by collecting candy and not getting hit too many times. The game is actually really fair in the sense that if you get hit, you'll lose some energy and start falling to the bottom of the screen, but if you're quick enough, you can get Tails back into the air by using the ring he's carrying with him. 
There can be some really close calls with this in the boss encounters, and I actually had a really great time playing once I got the hang of it. Though before that, I almost called it quits in the first couple minutes because of this yellow wall. It keeps flipping around and I could not get by it no matter what I did. Like I got it once by accident, and then I couldn't replicate what I did the first time to save my life because of how finicky it is. After conquering that obstacle though, it was all smooth sailing and Tails was free to put those fellas into obscure character jail where they'll never escape to hurt anyone ever again. Out of all these games, Tails Sky Patrol, funnily enough, is probably the one I'd be most likely to return to since I didn't end up finishing it either. It's not that I didn't want to, but it's just because I figured this was sort of a brief Game Gear boss rush of sorts, I could come back to whatever I enjoyed on my own time or on a stream, depending on how I feel later. I can't really say I disliked any of these games, which is a pleasant surprise considering I went in with zero expectations, though I still don't really like Mean Bean Machine, I guess, so 4 out of 5 ain't bad. You might have noticed that I left two very prominent spin-offs off the list this time, one in fact that I referenced in this very video, Sonic Labyrinth and Tails Adventure. I've actually already covered Sonic Labyrinth in the past, and it was totally great, honestly. I had a great time with it. So if you want to see me talk about that and why I, for some reason, like it, check out the card at the top of the video. But as for Tails Adventure, I figured I might use a full video for that one, because it's actually a pretty big spin-off game. It's not really like these other ones that feel sort of like micro games. So next up on the Game Gear docket, we are going to be doing a Sonic Triple Trouble, but before that, I'm thinking maybe I'll hop back to the future for a while and go to an amusement park. In space. Space amusement park. I'm doing Sonic Colors next, get excited. Yay, we're done again! That was interesting, this was definitely a filler video because I just wanted to talk about some shorter things, it was kind of refreshing actually. But anyway, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic reviews and other things that aren't Sonic reviews, because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters, who are Big Oof, Mike TGC, Luigi Fanman 2, Big Oof again, Danny Dauber, Crazy Sean DX, Motor Mouse V2, Michael Eversfield, Raiden Still Plays, Chaos, Cosmic Mushroom, Tylil Tech Guy, Chaotic Mercenary, Jaded Indolent, J Remy, Lucas Tallman, Mega Trafficone, Crystal, and on Patreon, John the Real Wawa Luigi, Rob Morrison, and everyone else who's supporting me in the $1 tiers, of course. Thank you guys so much for supporting, it really means a lot, and if you have any interest in becoming a supporter yourself, go check out the join button beneath the video, or check out the card at the top of the video that shows my Patreon. You get perks such as bonus videos, which are usually bloopers, but can sometimes be other things, and you also get your names listed here at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.